YouTube, what is going on guys? Good to see you again. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I know the videos have been a little bit few and far between as of late, but as you can see, got some new stuff going on with the setup. A lot of cool stuff coming your guys' way. A lot of great new content for the channel, so I'm really excited about it. I do want to try to be more consistent about posting. I know the videos haven't been coming as frequently as they used to, but I promise I'm, I'm getting it together. <laughs> So anyway, today we've got one that I've gotten a couple requests for. It's a good little install for you. We're doing a bar swap. Um, I already have a riser set up on my bike, so I won't actually be doing like lines in this install, brake line, clutch line, any of that kind of stuff. If you guys are more interested in that, I think there's probably some better tutorials for you out there. But if you're interested in just doing the bar swap in kind of a good, easy DIY kind of way, I think this is gonna be a great video for you. So after we get the new bars on, I'm gonna hop on the bike and we're gonna just let you guys know my thoughts on the new bars so yeah uh, without further ado we're just gonna hop right in so I hope you guys enjoy let's go So the first thing you want to want to take care of is just taking everything off of your bars. So for me, that means bar bag. I'm going to remove the fairing so I have a little bit more clearance to work with. And then just everything else that's up there. Now, after we go ahead and take everything off the bars, the other thing that we're going to want to do is either remove or loosen up the tank. Now, I'm just going to loosen mine, loosen those back bolts, remove the front bolts, and then just find something to prop it up on. This is just a box from one of my wrenches, but you can use a piece of wood or whatever you have. Now, once we go in underneath here, now you can start to see where your wiring harness is. It's underneath this sort of rubber cover. So just go ahead and pull that back and then just get everything disconnected. I won't bore you guys with me trying to get all the wires disconnected, but that's what it ends up looking like when it's all done. After you get all the wires disconnected, then you can go ahead and take your gauges off if you've relocated them to the bars like mine. If they're still on your dash, you probably don't need to actually take them off, but maybe removing the wires might give you a little bit more clearance, a little bit cleaner palette to work with. Um, I went ahead and removed the controls after this because I actually like to pull them directly out of the bars while the bars are still attached. I think that's a little bit easier than doing it all as one big clump with the bars off the bike. So as you can see, I just go ahead and pull them out one by one. Um, do this for both the controls and then obviously your turn signal wires as well. And once all of that is disconnected and removed, you can go ahead and actually take the bars off the risers. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward there. Just, you know, get them off. So now you can see the difference between the two bars that we have. So the bottom is the stock bars and then the top are these new thrashing bars. Now the biggest difference you'll notice is the amount of sweep. Now that's really the big reason why I wanted to change these bars out other than the actual color and look, but we'll get more into that in a second. So the next thing you're going to want to do is grab yourself a pair of shoelaces. Now the reason for this is because in order to get these wires through, it would be next to impossible to just jam them all the way in there just yourself if you don't have some kind of specialty tool or I've seen some guys do it with like a vacuum but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna feed these things through you might need to get a little tool to kind of help get them through the holes and everything on this side I'm starting with the throttle side obviously if you're doing this on a lowrider s you have a throttle by wire system so you need to make sure that one of those runs all the way through that throttle cabling side and then the other ones run out of those two little holes in the middle of the bars but try not to get frustrated. It can be a real pain in the ass, but I promise you'll work through it. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we're actually gonna go ahead and attach the wires to these shoelaces and then pull them back through the opposite direction that they came. Now, you can either tie them together or in my case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and tape them. And I'm doing this because I wanna maximize the amount of space that I have in those bars. If you depin the wires, it's a little bit easier, I would say but I hate deep ending wires. I'm really bad at it. So I'm just gonna do it this way. Again, takes a little bit of troubleshooting, takes some patience and you know, try again, try not to get frustrated, but if you just take your time with it, I promise there is enough room, there's enough clearance, at least with these bars that you can get all of the wires through there and they all fit, so it's okay. Now, once you get the first side done, just go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. Uh, the clutch side's a little bit easier because you don't have that throttle cable to deal with, 
On top of that, because the wires are coming out of the same hole, you can actually just tie the shoelaces together. That way you only have to pull one through and that's, you know, it'll just bring the other one with it, pro tip. But same thing, other side, just, you know, work them through and uh, it's not, it's not too bad. It's just, again, a pain in the butt. So finally, once you get all the wires pulled through, you can go ahead and get the bars back on the bike. Um, figure out where you want the bars to be set up and then just kind of loosely get the clamp on there. Then you can kind of rotate it through. Careful not to scratch it too bad. I mean, you know, try to get it mounted up as close to where you want it as you can the first time. And it's just time to route those cables. Um, you know, this is again, just another part of this job that's just, it's not hard, it's just tedious. So. You go ahead, you figure out exactly where you want all the wires to run. Try to keep it clean, you know, it looks better that way. I mean, I'm not you, do what you want, but for me personally, I like to take my time with this a little bit, make sure all those cables look good, make sure they're routed in a way that makes sense and they're not gonna get tangled or pinched or anything like that. Obviously for me, I have to include the gauges in this whole equation, so I get that put back on and then that cable gets run along with all the other ones that went through the bars in the same location down between the risers. But not a super complicated process, just again, you gotta have a little patience and then once you're done with that, you get everything reassembled. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So the other thing that we're gonna tackle in this project is putting on these mini stockers from Arlen Ness. Now these are little mirrors. Um, it's just one screw to take them on and off. So really, really easy. Don't need to get into a whole lot of description there, but just a nice little aesthetic piece that I think is just gonna change up the look just enough to kind of make it a little bit more custom. And plus the nice thing with these mirrors is they lock in place. They have a little Allen key screw at the end there that just keeps them all nice and together. And look at that, that is the uh, the final product. I think it looks really, really good, really clean. The color matches really well. Um, you know, you can see those new mirrors look good too. Got some new clamps from Thrash and Supply to actually match so that all the controls look good too. It all just comes together. It's all looking real nice, but how's it look on the bike? All righty, y'all, welcome back. Good to be back on the bike. Oh my goodness, man, it has been too long. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed the um, the install there for the bars. We're about to hop on the highway here so I can kind of, you know, show you guys how they're feeling, show you some of the setup, show you some of the look, the vibe, all that good stuff. Um, I think they look really good. I, it, it wasn't super duper noticeable, but the Harley bars definitely aren't as nice, like solid anodized black as these ones. Like you can definitely kind of tell that there's a, a color difference for sure when you look really closely. Now on top of that, and this is kind of, you know, this is the bigger thing is that these bars just, you can feel the quality difference. That's, that's the biggest thing to me. You can really, really feel the difference in quality. You can feel how like solid these things are. Like they're not, they're not going anywhere. As far as the height difference is concerned, really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, wasn't, wasn't a huge, huge difference. Like I said, the biggest thing for me, the reason why I wanted to show you this on the highway was because the whole reason I got these bars in the first place is because I felt like on long rides, I was just getting that, like that pain that I was talking about just kind of in the back of my arms from just kind of being like full, kind of straightened out. These bars, what they're allowing me to do, because they have a little bit more sweep to them, they're allowing me to basically say on longer rides, I'm just gonna kind of hold my hands out to the end and then I can just kind of let them just hang there. And I have like, I guess slack in my arms is the right way to put it. It's not like I'm at full locked out position the whole time, but the height didn't really change that much. Although I will say I like how now the gauges are kind of a little bit more level with the bars. I think that looks better than like the full kind of Mickey Mouse setup that you kind of end up with when you relocate your gauges up there. But anyway, I think that this is really solid. And I think if any of you guys are on the fence as to whether or not to change out your stock bars for a really good solid billet aluminum piece you know that you can tell is fabricated really well all that stuff i would say go for it you know pull the trigger because overall i'm really really happy with these i don't know like long term there might be some other setups that i 
take a look at, but damn, do I really, really not want to have to do a bar setup again for a very long time because, whoo boy, that was a pain in the asshole. I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, filter right up on over. You know, because it, it just, it just, it's not that it's a difficult thing to do. It's just that it is such a pain. But anyway, guys, we are actually on our way here. The, the other thing that I wanted to kind of touch base with a little bit, we're on our way to Miller Speed Co. right now because we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get hooked up, guys. We're gonna get hooked up with some really cool stuff here for the bike. Um, next big project is starting to uh, to take some shape. If you guys are in the Ventura, Oxnard, Santa Barbara, whatever, like that's you know central central Cali area. Bryce is your man. Like honestly, Miller Speed is my go-to for all the stuff that I can't really handle myself. But we're gonna touch on that in a future video. So for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the pain in the ass that was installing these bars. We're about to pull up here to the shop. So I hope you guys enjoyed and um, I can't wait to show you what's coming next. So stay tuned and I think it's gonna be great. Any questions, comments, all that good stuff, Tell me what you think is going to happen here at the shop as we pull up and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if anyone gets it right. This is, I think this is going to be a really good time. So I will talk to you guys later and uh, yeah, you know, peace out y'all. Well, let me park first. <laughs> that would be good. Anyway, peace out. Laters.